Chapter Five of the History of Miss Betsy Thoughtless, Volume Three by Eliza Haywood. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Five seems to be calculated rather for the instruction than entertainment of the reader. How great soever was the shock Miss Betsy had sustained in this interview with Mr. Trueworth, neither did he think himself much indebted to fortune, for having thrown her in his way, he had once loved her to a very high degree, and though the belief of her unworthiness, the fond endearments of one woman, and the real merits of another, had all contributed to drive that passion from his breast, yet as a wound but lately closed is apt to bleed afresh on every little accident so there required no less than the whole stock of the beautiful and discreet miss harriet's perfections to defend his heart from feeling anew some part of its former pain on this sudden and unexpected attack happy was it for him that his judgment concurred with his present inclination and that he had such unquestionable reasons for justifying the transition he had made of his affections from one object to another else might he have relapsed into a flame which if ever it had been attended with any true felicity must have been purchased at the expense of an infinity of previous disquiets he was now becoming extremely conversant with the family of sir basil visited there almost every day was well received by both the sisters and had many opportunities of penetrating into the real sentiments and dispositions of miss harriet which he found to be such as his most sanguine wishes could have formed for the woman to be blessed with whom he would make choice of for a wife when he compared the steady temper the affability the easy unaffected cheerfulness mixed with a becoming reserve which that young lady testified in all her words and actions with the capricious turns the pride the giddy lightness he had observed in the behaviour of miss betsy his admiration of one was increased by his disapprobation of the other how great a pity was it therefore that a young lady like miss betsy so formed by heaven and nature to have rendered any man completely happy in possessing her inferior to her fair competitor neither in wit beauty or any personal or acquired endowment her inclinations no less pure her sentiments as noble her disposition equally generous and benign should through her own inadvertency destroy all the merit of so many amiable qualities and for the sake of indulging the wanton vanity of attracting universal admiration forfeit in reality those just pretensions to it which otherwise she had been entitled from the deserving and discerning few mr trueworth as the reader may have observed did not all at once withdraw his affections from the first object of them nor transmit them to a second but on very justifiable motives the levity of miss betsy and other branches of ill conduct had very much weaned her from his heart before the wicked artifices of miss flora had rendered her quite contemptible in his opinion and had not wholly devoted himself to the beauties of miss harriet till he was well convinced the perfections of her mind were such as could not fail of securing the conquest which her eyes had gained he did not however presently declare himself he saw the friendship between the two sisters would be somewhat of an obstacle to his hopes he had heard that miss harriet had rejected several advantageous proposals of marriage merely because she would not be separated from miss wellair he also found that sir basil though for what reason he could not guess seemed not very desirous of having his sister disposed of the only probable way therefore he thought of obtaining his wishes was to conceal them till he found the means of insinuating himself so far into the good graces both of the one and the other as to prevent them from opposing whatever endeavours he should make to engage their sister to listen to his suit the stratagem had all the effects for which it was put in practice the intimacy he had long ago contracted with sir basil now grew into so perfect a friendship that he scarce suffered a day to pass without an invitation to his house mrs wellair expressed the highest esteem 
and liking of his conversation and miss harriet herself not imagining of what consequence every word that fell from her was to him said a thousand obliging things on his account particularly one day after they had been singing a two-part song together how often cried she to her sister shall we wish for this gentleman when we go into the country to act the principal part in our little operas all this he returned in no other manner than any man would have done who had no farther aim than to show his wit and gallantry so much of his happiness indeed depended upon the event that it behoved him to be very cautious how he proceeded and it is likely he would not have ventured to throw off the mask of indifference so soon as he did if he had not been emboldened to it by an unexpected accident among the number of those who visited the sisters of sir basil there was a young lady called miss blanchfield she was born in the same town with them but had been some time in london on account of the death of an uncle who had left her a large fortune she had a great deal of vivacity and good humour which rendered both her person and conversation very agreeable she passed in the eyes of most people for a beauty but her charms were little taken notice of by mr trueworth though she behaved towards him in a manner which would have been flattering enough to a man of more vanity or who had been less engrossed by the perfections of another by what odd means does fortune sometimes bring about those things she is determined to accomplish who could have thought this lady with whom mr trueworth had no manner of concern and but a slight acquaintance should even unknowing it herself become the happy instrument of having that done for him which he knew not very well how to contrive for himself yet so it proved in effect as the reader will presently perceive happening to call one morning on sir basil while he was dressing oh trueworth said he i am glad you have prevented me for i was just going to your lodgings i have something to acquaint you with which i fancy you will think deserves your attention i suppose replied mr trueworth you would not tell me anything that was not really so but pray what is it why you have made a conquest here it seems resumed sir basil and may say with caesar veni vidi vici prithee how did you sleep last night did your guardian angel or no kind tattling star give you notice of your approaching happiness that you might receive the blessing with moderation mr trueworth not able to conceive what it was he meant but imagining there was some mystery contained in this raillery desired him to explain for said he the happiness you promise cannot come too soon you will think so replied sir basil when i tell you a fine lady a celebrated toast and a fortune of twenty thousand pounds in her own hands is fallen in love with you with me cried mr trueworth you are merry this morning sir basil no faith i am serious resumed the other the lady i speak of is mrs blanchfield i have heard her say abundance of handsome things of you myself such as that you are a very fine gentleman that you had a great deal of wit sung well but my sisters tell me that when she is alone with them she asks a thousand questions about you and in fine talks of nothing else so that according to this account a very little courtship would serve to make you master both of her person and fortune what say you that i am neither vain enough to believe answered mr trueworth nor ambitious enough to desire such a thing should be real how cried sir basil in some surprise why she is reckoned one of the finest women in town has wit good nature is of a good family and an unblemished reputation then her fortune though i know your estate sets you above wanting a fortune with a wife yet i must tell you a fortune is a very pretty thing children may come and a younger brood must be provided for you argue very reasonably indeed replied mr trueworth but pray pursued he as you are so sensible of this lady's perfections how happened it that you never made your addresses to her yourself i was not sure she would like me so well as she does you said he besides to let you into the secret my heart was engaged before i ever saw her face and my person had been so too by this time but for an unlucky rub in my way 
what sir basil honourably in love cried mr trueworth ay charles there is no resisting destiny answered he i that have ranged through half the sex in search of pleasure doted on the beauty of one the wit of another admired by turns their different charms have at last found one in whom all i could wish in woman is comprised and to whom i am unalterably fixed beyond even i think a possibility of change may i be trusted with the name of this admirable person said mr trueworth and what impedes your happiness you shall know all replied sir basil in the first place she is called miss mabel what miss mabel of berry street cried mr trueworth hastily the same replied sir basil you know her then i have seen her said mr trueworth in company with a lady i visited some time ago and believe she is in reality the original of that amiable picture you have been drawing it rejoices me however that you approve my choice said sir basil but her father is without exception the most sordid avaricious wretch breathing he takes more pleasure in counting over his bags than in the happiness of an only child he seems glad of an alliance with me encourages my pretensions to his daughter is ready to give her to me to-morrow if i please yet refuses to part with a single shilling for her portion till he can no longer keep it that is he will secure to me ten thousand pounds after his decease and adds by way of cajole that perhaps he will then throw in a better penny but is positively determined to make no diminution of his substance while he lives these continued he are the only terms on which he will give his consent and that it is which has so long delayed my marriage mr trueworth could not here forbear making some reflections on the cruelty and injustice of those parents who rather than divide any part of their treasures with their children suffer them to let slip the only crisis that could make their happiness after which sir basil went on in his discourse it is not said he that i would not gladly accept my charming girl on the conditions the old miser offers or even without any future hopes of what he promises to do for her but i am so unhappily circumstanced as to be under a necessity of having ready money with a wife old sir basil my father gave my elder sister six thousand pounds on her marriage with mr wellair and i suppose to show his affection to both his daughters was equal bequeathed at his death the same sum to harriet and this to be charged on the estate notwithstanding it was then under some other encumbrances she can make her demand either on coming of age or on the day of marriage whichever happens first the one indeed is three years distant she being but eighteen but who knows how soon the other may happen tis true she seems at present quite averse to changing her condition but that is not to be depended upon all young women are apt to talk in that strain but when once the favourite man comes in view away at once with resolution and virginity mr trueworth now ceased to wonder at the little satisfaction sir basil had shown on any discourse that casually happened concerning love or marriage to miss harriet and nothing could be more lucky for him than this discovery of the cause he found by it that one obstacle at least to his hopes might easily be removed and that it was in his own power to convert entirely to his interest that which had seemed to threaten the greatest opposition to it a moment's consideration sufficed to make him know what he ought to do and that a more favourable conjuncture could not possibly arrive for his declaring the passion he had so long concealed methinks sir basil said he after a very short pause there is not the least grounds for any apprehensions of the inconvenience you mention whoever has in view the possession of miss harriet must certainly be too much taken up with his approaching happiness to think of anything besides ah friend cried sir basil you talk like one ignorant of the world i talk like one who truly loves replied mr trueworth and is not ignorant of the merit of her he loves and now continued he perceiving sir basil looked a little surprised i will exchange secrets with you and for the one you have reposed in me will entrust you with another 
which has never yet escaped my lips i love your charming sister the first moment i beheld her made me her adorer her affability her modest sweetness her unaffected wit her prudence the thousand virtues of her mind have since confirmed the expressions that her beauty made and i am now all hers as sir basil had never discovered anything in mr trueworth's behaviour that could give him the least cause to suspect what now he was so fully informed of by his own confession he was very much astonished is it possible cried he are you in earnest and do you really love harriet yes from my soul i do replied mr trueworth and wish no other blessing this side heaven than to obtain her as to the six thousand pounds you speak of i neither should demand nor would accept it till well assured the payment of it was agreeable to the situation of your affairs would you then marry harriet with nothing said sir basil or what is tantamount to nothing a small fortune and that to be paid discretionary rather than mrs blanchfield with twenty thousand pounds in ready specie not only rather than mrs blanchfield replied mr trueworth but than any other woman in the world with all those thousands multiplied into millions amazing love and generosity cried sir basil with some vehemence could she be capable of refusing she were unworthy of you but this you may be assured of that if all the influence i have over her can engage her to be yours she shall be so mr trueworth could testify the transport this promise gave him no otherwise than by a warm embrace saying at the same time dear sir basil yes yes rejoined that gentleman to give my sister such a husband as mr trueworth i would put myself to a much greater inconvenience than the prompt payment of her fortune and shall not abuse your generous offer by i will not hear a word on that head cried mr trueworth hastily interrupting him and if you would add to the favours you have already conferred upon me do not even think of it pursue your inclinations with the deserving object of them and be as happy with her as i hope to be through your friendly assistance with the adorable miss harriet here ensued a little contest between them sir basil was ashamed to accept that proof of friendship mr trueworth proffered but the many arguments he made use of joined to the consideration of his own ease at last prevailed after which sir basil told him the ladies were gone to the shops in order to make some purchases they wanted but that he would take the first opportunity on their return to acquaint his sister with the sentiments he had for her and appointed to meet him at the chocolate house in the evening to let him know the success End of chapter five